I'm a scrub. I'm, I'm, I am what you call you, Gil Scrub. I admit it, I'm not good. I only have three YCS tops. Both of them were with True Dracos, and one of them was with Danger FTK. I am still not good enough. I need to take my game to another level. I need to make sure I become the best of the best. Enter. All right, the Duelist Academy can help me. Duelist Academy is creating content and coaching for Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. One dollar a month, our underlying gratitude, shout outs in all videos. Deck Doctor, okay, so this is one where you send them a deck list and they help you make changes. Okay, this one is definitely interesting. Ooh, Slifer Slacker. I ain't no Slifer Slacker. For $30 a month, you will receive all the content posted to the Patreon and deck profiles. Send us a deck list and we will provide changes and full write-up of why we changed what we did. Raw Yellow Student, for $50 a month, you will receive access to two hour coaching session per month. He'll tell us your schedule and we'll find an available coach to work with. So this one, you'll find me a coach, two hour session. Awesome, and it also comes with Deck Doctor. Deck Doctor is the one that I definitely want to work with because I have a deck list. Deck Doctor is the one that I am definitely interested in for sure. So these two includes the Deck Doctor, but Raw Yellow Student, you get a two hour coaching session per month. Now let's go off to the Obelisk Blue Student. I usually like the best of the best. So let's look at the Obelisk Blue Student and what this tier has to offer. So for $75 a month, you will receive access to our $10 content tier, access to our $50 tier with some changes. Okay, so I get this tier, plus all the other tiers right here, Content Deck Doctor, with some changes. So I get three hours of coaching, that's huge. Three hours of coaching is huge. This one can definitely benefit me the most. Pick which coach you want to work with. Pick a coach? I gotta pick a coach? So look at this. So who is this? So we got Asala, Bowden, Aaron Furman, Max Reynolds, Raphael Nevin, Nashad, Ryan Levine, and Jesse Kahn. Ooh, <laughs> I get to pick Jesse Kahn, the best player in the world right now? <laughs> Ooh, three hours of coaching with Jesse Kahn? Yo, you know what that means? I'll become the best duelist in the world. Holy macaroni! Okay, definitely worth it. This is more personalized experience for people who are fans of specific players. We know how amazing it can be to have your favorite player help you get better, and we're hoping to let you achieve this at the most in-depth level. Jesse can help me at the most in-depth level, 100%. What is this? Jesse Khan is currently at capacity for December. He will not be available this month. What the? That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Then I'll go with my second favorite player here. Oh, Isala right here. Asala Rajnaganda right here. Yep, I'm definitely going with Asala. Oh my goodness. Look at all those tops, bro. Look, second place. <laughs> I'm gonna pick Asala right here. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look, look at his smile right there. He looks like a very energetic coach. Definitely can help me all out. I'm telling you guys right now, all these players right here are pro players. They have a bunch of YCS tops. And I'm sure that each and every single one of them can help you with your needs when it comes to the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. But for this video, I must, I'm gonna call Asala. I'm gonna call Asala right now and see what he can do to help me with my deck using the $75 tier. Let's do it. Hassan, how are you doing today, brother? Not too bad, not too bad. How about yourself? I'm doing great, bro. So, you know, I looked at the Duelist Academy uh, Patreon page, and the, one of the things that interested me the most was definitely the Obelisk Blue tier, because um, I get to pick who I get to coach with, and I thought you'd be the perfect person to coach me through this deck loading process. I want to become a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player. Like, what do you define as a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player? I'm uh, probably just someone that's consistent over multiple formats, like not just only multiple tops in one format, but like just time and time again shows that they can keep up with everyone else. And you came second like nine times or something? <laughs> so I came second twice this year. Given I currently hold the record of being the only person to have ever won in the finals and not be a champion. So I do have a finals win, it's just not mine. <laughs> so that means that with this coaching, I have three hours within the month, right? I'm gonna only use one hour with that tier. It also comes with Deck Doctor, right? So today, I have a Dark Magician deck uh, oh. for me to show you. Why are you laughing? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. I know you're familiar with the deck because each time you talk, I know you know what the deck does. And I'm pretty sure you can give us, you know, your insight and your take on this deck and how we can possibly make this deck a little bit more competitive. So I was running if I can show you my list right now and you can basically coach me through basically the deck building process, if that's okay. Sounds good. This is my Dark Magician list right here. This is what I have. And we're gonna be using uh, the Legendary Duel of Six cards. So I'm not if you're familiar with cards like Magician Soul. 
and also cards like Faithful Servant. First and foremost, I just want to tell you that I'm kind of looking to build this deck as some sort of like stun variant. I know that Orcus is one of the most dominant deck in today's metagame. That's why you see cards like Kaiku being used in the main deck. You see cards like Super Poly and a lot of, you know, back row heavy cards and cards that disrupt, you know, the format with Super Polymerization, Manhunt, and I'm also playing Dinkurusu in the extra deck as well. So that way that I can just, you know, steal my opponent's Galatea and stuff. So my whole strategy behind this deck is trying to make this deck as consistent as possible and try to just basically stun your opponent and just prevent my opponent from not playing the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. So what can you give me advice on when it comes to this deck list? Like, do you see anything wrong or what are the changes you think that I can make to make this deck a little bit better? Okay, so actually I am pretty well versed in the new Dark Magician cards just because like I read up a lot of LED6 and LED6 is like a really, really good set. Right. Like, better than any of the main sets that we've had in a while. Right. But, uh, like, obviously Magician's Souls is, like, the best card. Yes. Uh, this card just does so much for the deck. I think for, like, Dark Magician particularly, it made it so you're less reliant on, like, illusion magic or whatever right. to, like, see actual Dark Magicians, because it also just puts it on the board by itself or just dumps it in the grave to use with uh, the Continuous Trap, Eternal Soul. Right. So, like, you just have more access. Mm -hmm. And then, like, it's other effects, like, being able to choose, like, because it's cost to send the Dark Witch to the Grave, you'll always have access to that, that's, like, not actionable. Right. And then it's either you can summon it, or you can just summon that Dark Witch that you sent. Any thoughts on Faithful Servant? This card, like, at first glance, seems, like, crazy, right? Because there's so many different versions of like Dark Magician out there that you can draw from. But the problem with that is like all the other ones outside of actual Dark Magician are pretty bad. Like the Palladiums are not worth playing because they're just kind of breaks and they're they just win more because they require you to be in like really niche scenarios. Right. I think this card's effect is really good. It's just weird that it has to like pair with another card. Because mm -hmm. you're not really just trying to use it to like stack your deck and then leave it there, right? You, you want to be able to like get to that card and right. normally what the way you do that is just to have uh, a dark magician grave already so like you just stack it and then immediately draw it the best way to do that is with magician souls uh interesting way to take advantage of these cards is just uh work more with their draw function because a uh, magician souls has the other effect to uh, like uh cycle spells and traps on the field or hand because you have the option to like either send the dark magician or just to actually summon it mm -hmm. and if you summon it you can just uh like cycle up to two Spell traps. That's like another way to draw off the Magician Souls, like whatever you stack. Or like you just resolve the souls first and then stack with the Servant and then you can you choose to just draw whatever you've stacked already because there's already a Dark Magician in your graveyard. Right. Or you can choose to draw first off souls because if there's like just a lot of bulk spell and traps in your hand that you don't need, that's like the problem with Extravagance, right? You just can't take advantage of these effects. Right. Because if you start with Extravagance, you just don't get to use them. Oh, okay, okay. So would you still recommend playing Extravagance in, uh, in the main deck paired off of souls or no? Uh, probably not. Oh, here, one. this one, yeah. this one. Okay, so what's yeah. so good about this card? Oh, like, it's just a card that lets you draw every single turn. And if you use it during your opponent's turn, you get to, like, actually set the card that you draw, and you can still use it. Like, it's like a backtrack, okay. which is, like, really broken for, like, surprise impermanences, surprise judgments, surprise strikes, whatever. And, like, I think this card has a lot of value, and it's fairly easy to, like, actually summon, because all you need is uh, Ayatomias. Now that either you have like a way to just put a Dark Magician on the field turn one with the Souls effect, like it's mm -hmm. actually a lot easier to get to. I mean, you could choose to play multiple Tamiases if you want, and then mm -hmm. just try to draw into it, because like, you can, with like, exactly. uh, but what it's what just would... like less reliable. Yeah. And I just try to focus on get being able to use the multiple spells and like actual draw effects. You can go about it in a couple different ways, but I think mm -hmm. the best way is the, like the most defensive way, and by that I mean like, being able to do it going second and that was one of the huge like one of the really big problems with this deck right it has yes. to set up yes exactly and first you can like have a pretty good chance if you were going to like try to build this deck to be able to fully function going second you right. just need to be able to draw into your engine as much as possible while also clearing their board and i think the best engine to do that is unfortunately sky striker what yeah. what <laughs> Okay, okay, let's strike. Okay, cool. So with oh. the addition of like souls and uh, what's it called? The Faithful Servant, right? They just have yeah. more ways to put spells in the graveyard and then cycle through your deck. Because like That's you broken. can just get rid of like useless spells in your hand with the effect of souls. Mm. That's cute. And That's then you cute. can just pair like all the additional like spell effects that you are using. Okay. To 
just kind of manipulate your graveyard and then make sure to engage always draws cards. So like looking at the current format, right, the best, like you need to just use the cards that work against what's like the most prominent in the format. Right. And right now the biggest problem is Orcus. Right. So Shark Cannon is actually just more important than Anchor most of the time. So I'd recommend even playing two Shark Cannon. That's, that's, that's pretty neat. Very, I'm very trying neat. to draw like four cards every turn, you know? Yeah, wow. Given that's, that's not, probably not what's going to happen, but like if we draw one or two, I'm, I'm okay with that. There is just not enough monsters in the deck to really play alert. Into the Void is like the better standalone and just draws you immediately into what you Faithful Servant for. And I also think Foolish Burial Goods is strong in this deck because it doesn't only uh, send like Metal Close Fusion. If you want, it could send Servant to do the same thing, but I, th mm. I still think you'd plague uh, Metal Close Fusion just because you can dump it with Souls as well. Uh, another really neat thing you can do with it is you can just dump Navigation straight to the grave, so it's mm. that negates always there. If we're relying on the spells to break the boards, I don't think we need the traps in the main deck. We can definitely side them if we're going to like just try to draw them uh, like with our cards after the fact. Okay. So like that's more of a going first strategy. I don't really want to have them in my main deck. And uh, Eternal Souls for sure, three of. Navigation is a little weird for me, just because like that is one of the easiest cards to brick with, right? Because you always need to have a Dark Magician in hand. And like the way you normally play the deck is that you would have to eventually get Dark Magician in your hand with a card like Illusion Magic, right? Like Magician Souls is a card. You just have a way to consistently put Dark Magician in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. So you don't really want to be putting it in your hand as much. Like right. Illusion Magic lets you clear the, the rod to activate your striker spell. So like you'd still want to play it. I just don't think we want to rely on navigation that much. So I think I'd want to cut it down to one because you're also just not resolving the effect of na uh, navigation more than once ever anyway. Oh, the problem I've always had with Super Poly in this format, like I haven't liked Super Poly in any deck just because it doesn't actually do anything to anything's end board, if you know what I mean. Because yes. like what what is Orcus really ending on? They're ending on the IP. That is like the most common thing. It's just an IP. You might be able to hit them midway, but that means they're already summoning something. Like, it's just not something you can activate just straight out the gate. And, like, if you're doing it mid-play for them, there's just, like, better things to do if you want interrupts. Right. I think Impermanence is, like, really strong as a trap, because like, you can also just function with Into the Void and stuff. I don't know if you need Afterburner as much, just because, like, this deck kind of has its own effects to get rid of it. Kaiku is really cool that it can be summoned off Navigation, but you're, like, really not trying to rely on Navigation, and you're probably not normal summoning it. Okay. So it seems really weaker. The girl, I think... She also gets a lot worse because you really just don't need to add Dark Magician to your hand. And it's just, what's it really doing for you, right? It just kind of sits in your hand. It doesn't function well with the Striker Engine. It doesn't function well with, like, the normal okay. summons that you have. I just want to eliminate bricks, right? I just want to consistently get to, like, right. the corpse of the engine, which is just the trap and the continuous trap and the continuous spell. Like, that's what we want to see. And then maybe have some Striker spells to, like, back it up. I think you should definitely put an upstart. Like, oh, I'll start. oh, 100%. So we're going to take advantage of the Striker Engine 100%. Yeah. Man. If the Striker Engine goes, then yeah, I try to just make it like really control-based and just try to like still get to the same strategy of resolving the Circle and the Soul as much as possible. You yeah, can just kind of fill it up with like either more draw or like hand traps or... Uh, we, uh, we can't you, really play hand traps, right? Because of Into the Void? Yeah, like uh, it depends on which ones you kind of use like if it's gamma like you don't really care if you discard it after the fact and like you're not always gonna have into the void in your hand mm -hmm. and it's like something that you could potentially use while you're playing because it's something that's good going first it's good going second and it just protects all your like important effects yo this list is looking solid man i'm liking this if i had to cut two cards it would probably be like cards that are like least consistent right like mm -hmm. maybe just one impermanence mm -hmm. and like maybe an impermanence, a shark, like my options are impermanence, shark cannon, or maybe even a faithful servant, just because like faithful servant has to rely on other cards to truly be good, but I think it's like too good by itself, like with in combination of everything else to cut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I just like cut something random or just play 41, it doesn't really matter because you're just trying to draw anyway, like an upstart isn't like used to just dig one card deeper, it's like also throwing a spell in the grave. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't actually matter if you play 41, like, like the main three, like, yeah, those three. The kind of, if you want to be like that, I don't really think you want to be like that. <laughs> like, post turn one, there should be a rod in the grave, right? And rod has another effect, where if you, as long as you activate a spell trap during your opponent's turn, you can actually just tribute a Dark Magician you control to add it to your hand, so that clears it by itself. Then uh, a Lambda, just so you have more stuff to do with your, uh, your Gamma. Siphon Lord Omega. Weird tricks with Servant to like just put whatever card you actually want on the top of your deck and then drawing it right. with Into the Void but putting spells in your grave to make your engages better. 
wow and then you have so many ways to get to all these cards so i think like it has actually pretty strong potential like any advice you can also give me when it comes to playing this deck any things that i should know you just have to be really wary of like when you get to activate your effects you just need to time it so they can't really take advantage of their ding or like because it's all timing based on how to beat the orcus matchup and that's going to be the most difficult matchup right so you just have to really focus down on banishing the battle at a point where they can't really ding it away effectively and being able to manipulate your striker engine to like deal with their most problematic uh interruptions one hour later asala uh thank you so much man thank you so much for helping me with this feel free to come back to me let me know how the deck went and we can try to work on like updating it based on like what problems you might have run into and then good luck Okay, okay, Asala, thank you so much. I'm definitely going to take this deck for a run and see how it goes. So we got the coaching done. I decided to use one hour, three hours coaching that I had access to. It's time to duel. It's time to do, 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 do. <laughs> Anyways, it's time to duel. Paper gang, let's get it. All right, paper again, baby. Let's go. All right, there you go. There you go. We're Gucci. Without further ado, let's go first. Let's go. Ah, Konami, please, Konami, I beg you, um, do something with the next ban list with this card right here. I don't feel good playing this card in my main deck, guys. Oh my goodness, look at my hand. Foolish goods, I'll start engage. That's already god cards right there. That's the god hand. All right, let's do it. Goods, goods is going to dump my faithful servant to the graveyard. This card is also like another upstar goblin in the deck, which is actually really good. I can go upstar goblin. Okay, so draw into the circle. Cool, cool, cool. And then let's skillfully activate engage. Let's skillfully activate engage. So 20 drones. Wow. Yes, yes. Are we gonna draw one card? Most definitely. Draw a card. Oh, you drew into eternal soul. Well, wow. our hand is basically set up to win this game. So we're gonna go one of drones. Uh, we're gonna make Kagari. Okay. I feel really bad playing this. I feel super bad, man. Oh my goodness. Another engage. Another engage. Phantasme. Okay, cool. He's gonna draw two cards, shuffle back one, engage. Uh, hack the other engage. We're gonna just obviously search the shark cannon because there's no point in searching my stack, bro. I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry, man. That's all I gotta say. Well, like I said, there's no point searching Widow Anchor because Phantasme is on the field, so I might as well search the shark cannon. Having two shark cannons is pretty good. So he's either playing Orcus, Thunders, or Salads. What, what other decks main deck Phantasme is now? Draw one card. <laughs> this guy says I'm not a man. <laughs> Sorry, Akiza. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> That's weird. Okay, we're gonna draw one card. Okay, so we drew into our permanent tonight. That kind of replaces uh, our Widow Anchor. But anyways, get to my Black Rose Dragon. Okay, this guy is getting weird now. Okay, so now it's time to activate my Magician Souls. We're gonna dump Dark Magicians in the graveyard. I'm gonna special summon the Souls. And I can also draw two cards as well, uh, which is absolutely insane. So now let's go off with Circle first. Mmm, really good. I'm gonna be drawing these two cards regardless because I have Magician Souls on the field, so I can just stack this and stack this. First and foremost, let's go off with my Faithful Servant first. Let's go Faithful Servant. Draw, draw the Navigation. Cool. So I know that I'm gonna draw navigation regardless because I stacked it with obviously dark magical circle And the next card that I'm gonna draw is definitely magician's rod so I can go souls I can send eternal soul and impermanence to the graveyard to draw two cards The reason why I send eternal soul to the graveyard is because I can get hit back with magician's rod regardless So I can go normal rod Activate rod add eternal soul and now my hand is basically set. We're pretty much lit. So now let's go into Hayate Okay, so make Hayate, and then we can we have one, two, we have one, two, three. We can have four disruptions right now. Make IP. Okay, cool. And then I can make Shizuku. Cool. And I can set one, two, three, four. Wow. And I, I also get a Shizuku end phase search as well. Yes. I mean, search the Widow Anchor directly from my deck to your hand. It's a free discard. It's definitely a free discard uh, off uh, the Unicorn for sure. So, 
let's see what he does next. All right. Is he gonna attempt to enter battle phase first? Oh no. So foxy. I need to be able to use my shark cannons. If I can't use my shark cannons, Foxy's gonna come out and destroy my circle. And that's a disruption gone. And I can't afford that disruption to be wasted. Um, yeah, I'm gonna chain IP now. Yep. Make unicorn. Yep. Lady Debug. I might as well shuffle back, discard the anger, target the phantasmic. Negate it? Why? Sure, that's fine. If he if, if he negate you know Well Unicorn can't be destroyed by card effects anyway, so the Unicorn was supposed to be on the field. Trigger out Gazelle. Um, that's fine by me. Yep, that's fine by me. Gazelle is gonna dump. What is he gonna dump to the graveyard? He knows I have the shark cannon in my hand. So dumps Falco. Okay, interesting. Summon debug. Well, this guy this guy literally has everything. Everything. That's cool. Adds the foxy to his head. Bounce back the gazelle. Sure. Especially the Falco. I'm saving mine for the foxy, man. That's fine. Foxy, okay. Discard foxy. Fine. Banish that foxy. Target this spinny. Yeah. See ya. Yep. See ya, spinny. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely the, the, the correct play, right? That's cool. Let's see what he has next. Hita. Oh, wait. I have a response. Let me response. How do I response? Let me respond to the summon of Hita. Oh, man. I have a response to that Hita, man. Oh, I had that response to that Hita. You can get this. Pretty normal. Somebody has Gazelle in his hand. This, this, try to use Falco to rebalance back Gazelle. I guess I can go navigation. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, let's go navigation. Switch on Dark Magician. Switch on this one from the deck. You can get like a Garry. Yes. Finish. Finish the heat up. That's fine. Let's go summon a dark magician for my graveyard. Cool. That's fine. Sure. Hydro corn. That's good. I also have navigation in the grave as well. Phoenix, that's fine. Rage, oh shoot. Obviously, I'm, I'm not gonna change Eternal Soul. If I change Eternal Soul, my whole board is, is done. That's game! That's game! I have game for sure then. Yeah, this is, def this, this is definitely game. Okay. Yeah, this this is game. This is game. 
This is Gabe. Well, he has Gazelle in his hand. It doesn't matter if he has Gazelle in his hand. I have Gabe. Effect. Search Eternal Soul. Why not? I can just send this. Nope. Oh, Special Dark Magician from the Grave. And then. Effect. Banish. And that should be game, right? He has Gazelle in his hand and one unknown. And that should be game. Wow. That was good. That was actually really good. That was really good. GG. Akiz. Let me call it GG Akiza. GG Akiza. Wow. That's sick. That was sick. I actually never thought Splash into Striker Engine will in, 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 into the Dark Magician deck. <laughs> this guy's trolling too much. <laughs> Alright, man. That was sick. That was good. I actually had fun. Well, obviously, guys, to be honest, as a person that activates Engage, it is kind of fun to activate Engage. I can't even lie. It's kind of fun, but it's probably one of the most... It's bad. It's really bad. I... If I was a person that watched my opponent resolve to engage in drawing two, that's probably the worst thing possible, man. Shout out to Asala, man. Asala, thank you so much for helping me make this. This is the deck list, guys. I'm pretty sure with the new upcoming balance, engage might go to one, so this list might not be viable. So we definitely gotta take different routes into playing this deck. But this deck right now, at the moment, if you guys definitely wanna test this deck on DB or y Zero Pro, it is a very fun and explosive deck to just play. Wow, this is sick. This is absolutely amazing. Right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys smash the thumbs up button. That'll be absolutely amazing. A huge shout out to the Duelist Academy Asala for helping me, you know, coach through the deck building process when it comes to actually building my Dark Magician deck to try to make this deck as competitive as possible. I played Dark Magicians for quite a while now, especially with the LED6 uh, release of the new cards that's gonna be coming up in January. But I felt like it was uh, beneficial and I needed to learn a lot more when it comes to actually deck building this deck and it's really awesome to have a pro player uh, coach advice on how to properly deck build and just hearing his insights and thoughts behind playing certain cards or different ratios to help make my dark magician deck a little bit better than before it definitely helped out a lot by the way this video is not sponsored by them whatsoever they did not pay me anything to make this video but it would be a really good idea to actually try to take my game to another level and just using this coaching platform that they provided you know to give me advice on how I can basically just improve my game and the really cool thing about this is that they can help you with any deck. As you guys can see, I didn't give Asala my Sky Striker Orcus deck. I gave him a completely random Dark Magician deck and he gave me his insight about why I should play certain cards or why I shouldn't play certain cards. They're actually willing to help you with any deck that you provide. So if you want to make your Battling Boxer deck a better deck, yo, guys, go to the Deck Doctor. And by having a coach on your side, you just feel more confident. Uh, as a whole. So I definitely, guys, as a learning experience, I learned a lot. I had so much fun, you know, deck building with Asala. Am I a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player now? <laughs> yes, I am. This is how I became a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player in one hour, and this is all because of Asala's help. If you guys want to see more crazy content like this, make sure you guys smash the thumbs up button. That'll be absolutely phenomenal. This is your boy Sam from Team Sam. Sam signing out. All right, guys. Peace. Let's go, let's go.